Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of Mies van der Rohe. And if you've been here before, you know I always mention Mies van der Rohe. What about Rem Koolhaas? We also have the campus center designed by the world famous Rem Koolhaas. Today we're going to be looking at Rhino Rendering Basics. And here you see what I call a hybrid drawing, which has Rhino Rendering overlaid with Rhino line work. I'll zoom into that a little bit closer so you can see some of the detail. So today we're going to look at how to create drawings like this one. Before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe. Make sure you click on the little bell to get the notifications. Here's my YouTube channel homepage and you can see I have a lot of videos. Videos on a lot of different topics, so have a look at that. Also, connect with me on Instagram. It's my first name underscore my last name. See what I'm up to, see what kind of daily architecture I'm seeing, and see what projects my students and I are working on. Okay, let's get into Rhino rendering basics. So here are the topics that we're gonna cover. You see a list of these here, and we'll be going through these. Okay, so on the screen now you see a viewport that is set to rendered. And what I'd like to see is I would like to see my line weights being displayed or my print display. So I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to just type in the command print display. And I'm going to turn the state to on. Okay, so now you see some of the line weights that we didn't see before. And I'm going to go ahead and make those lines a little bit thinner by changing the print width. So you'll see those update live on the screen. Now if you'd like to see in full detail how to work with line weights in Rhino and see them, what you see is what you get or what I call WYSIWYG. I'll have a link to a video at the end of this one where you can find out all the information on how to do that. Okay, so let's look at the Rhino rendering settings. So this blue sphere that you have in the standard toolbar, if you right click on it, it's going to give you the Rhino rendering settings. And let's just go down through these one at a time. Now resolution and quality, by default it's the viewport. And we're going to look at how to change that resolution toward the end. We're going to do a few things before that. So we're going to skip over resolution and quality. Now our background, we're going to use a solid color. You have other options here. I'm going to turn off the ground plane because I like to create my own ground plane. So you see when I check that off, you see that changing in the viewport. So let's go ahead and start there. I'm going to make a ground plane, and I'm going to make a layer for that ground plane. And making a layer for the ground plane allows me to later change the material on that ground plane. Go ahead and make that current, and in a top view, I'm just going to draw a plane. So back in my, my perspective view, you can now see that ground plane. Okay, let's go back into the render settings. Keep going down the list here. So the ground plane has been checked off. Now in Rhino 6, you have some new options that weren't there in Rhino 5 that are set to default. One is what we can use for our custom environment for reflections. We'll come back to that a little later. You'll notice that skylight is turned on. In Rhino 5, that option is not turned on by default. And now you see the difference between these two. 
everything. So we're gonna we're gonna leave that on, and we're gonna go down now to ambient light. Okay, let's look at how ambient light affects the scene. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick rendering. So instead of right clicking on this blue sphere, I'm gonna left click on it. Okay, now setting your ambient lighting has a big impact on how the rendering looks. So that's one of the first light settings you want to change. And when you're doing these quick renderings, sometimes using the viewport display, it isn't quick enough. You can even go smaller. So let's go smaller or I should say lower resolution let's make the resolution lower and now let's go ahead and render it so see you're going to save yourself a lot of time there and what we're going to use a lot is we're going to use the button that clones the render window so that you can see these changes in real time so let's go ahead and let's keep looking at this ambient light Okay, so if I make it a lighter color, and I go ahead and render that, you can see it's washing out the scene. It doesn't look like the previous one. So finding that right ambient color is a first step. Okay, so let's Let's keep ours there for now. We can come back and revisit it. Now, I don't have any control over the shadows at the moment. So to control the shadows, I'm going to create a daylight, or some people call it a sunlight. I'm going to actually use, in Rhino, I'm going to use a directional light. Now, I like to make my directional lights in a top viewport. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that directional light. Now notice it's, it's asking me first for the end of the light vector. So what is, the, what is the sun or the daylight pointing at? And I like to do this without my snaps on. So I'm make, making sure I have my O snap off and my grid snap off. And I'm just placing the target of this light in the middle of my scene. And then it's looking for the start of the light direction vector. So that would be the light itself. So I can click that. Now, it shows me just an icon of it, but I'm gonna wanna move this light around. So if I click on it, you'll see that it gives me the control points for that light. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is raise it because it's down right on the ground plane. So as I pick this up, you'll see that there are three control points. The middle control point, which is what's active by default, moves the entire light. Then I have the two end points that I can click on. Get in there a little closer. I can click on that and I can move that. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting that be selected. Okay, so there's my my daylight. Now I want to select the target. There we go. Okay, that little pop-up that was popping up, that's to type text in. Uh, I didn't want to do that at the moment. I wanted to just move the target. Okay, so once you get a handle on moving that around, you're seeing that now in my upper right viewport in real time. So let's select it in the top viewport. Also, my gumball is on. If you're wondering how I'm seeing the, the axes, the X, Y, Z axes, my gumball is turned on. So in a top view, I like to use the little grid to the upper right, which moves it in the X and the Y. And now you see as I rotate this around, the shadows are changing, are updating live in that perspective viewport. So you have a lot of control over the light. And then in this front view, I can, if I lower that down, my shadows are being, are longer. If I raise it up, 
my shadows are shorter. So you want to find the right position for that, for that, uh, that light which represents the sun. Okay, the other thing that you want to set up is you want to set up a camera. You want to have, we'll call it a fixed camera. Um, the viewports, you know, you can orbit around with your with your right mouse button and you can you can zoom in out zoom in and out but you'd like to set up a camera a fixed camera so to do that we're going to set that up in the top view again we're going to go to the main menu we're going to go to view we're going to set camera and we're going to use place camera and target and we're going to make this in a very similar way that we made the directional light Okay, now in this case, it wants me to plot the first point, which is the camera itself. So I'm going to pick a point and then the target. Okay, so you see it changed my view to that camera view. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to name this view. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. If we go to the properties for that view you see right here it's it's called top uh, we're gonna go ahead and name it and a better way to do that is if I click on this down arrow I'm gonna go down and I'm going to set view and I'm going to named views now I'm gonna go ahead and save that view and I'm gonna call this camera one okay so I have that as a saved view and I like to place my camera view I'm gonna place it in this upper right view so now when I go to this pull down for perspective and I go to set view that shows up that view that I saved so I can change it to camera one I'm gonna change this view back to my top view okay so here with this camera one couple things I need to change. One is the projection of this. I don't want it to be parallel. I want it to be a perspective. Okay, now that camera is a perspective. And I can start to move that camera around. Now, we don't see the camera object by default. So to show that camera, I'm using the function key F6. Okay. So that shows me the camera for the current viewport. Right now my top view is current, so I'm gonna turn that off and make sure my camera view is current. And then I'm gonna use function F6. And now you're gonna see that camera. And I can move that camera around and it's updating in that camera one view. Okay, so let's, let's look at this a little bit closer. So much like the light we created, it has edit points that I can, I can move these around. So moving the camera is, is pretty simple. It's the target that's a little trickier. If I click on the target here, I have to be careful that I'm not selecting the very top point. You see that in the front viewport. Because what will happen is it will, it will rotate the camera around. And one thing that's good is you can undo those moves. Now, there's the regular undo, but then there's also the view undo. So I'm going to make sure that I'm doing a view undo to get it back to before it flipped it around. Okay, so there's the view undo, and then there's the just the good old-fashioned undos. Okay, so to move the target, I want to make sure I'm getting that. In, in plan, it's still that point out here, but it's the middle plan. It's the middle point, not that top point. And now I can, I can move the target around. Okay, so let's get, a, let's get a view set up here. Okay, so by default, the Z height of the camera and target is zero so I'm gonna wanna raise those points up so I'm gonna move this camera up 
and I'm going to move that target point up a little bit. Okay. And then again, that middle point will move the entire camera around. Okay. Now, while we're looking at the camera, something else that I want to look at. Make sure this is. Okay, so when I'm editing the properties of the camera view, I want to make sure that that camera view is current. So top was current and it showed parallel here. So you got to be careful of that. I want camera one to be current. Okay, that's perspective. The other thing that I want to look at in regards to the camera is lens length. So the higher this value is, the further away it looks from the objects. The lower the value, the closer it is to the objects. And this is without moving the camera or the target. So I'll show you what I mean. If I change the lens length to 100, you see it's moving me in closer in that case. And if I type in 25, it's moving me further. So it's the opposite, I guess, of what I just said. So let's try that again. So my lens length of 100, I'm in closer. and my lens length of 25, I'm further away. So the other way that I look at this is the lower the value, the wider the angle. So around 25 is a nice wide angle lens. So that's, that's different than what the default viewport is. And it, it takes people a while to, to switch over from just orbiting in a viewport and zooming in and out versus using a camera and controlling a camera. So you want to take some time and get comfortable with working with the camera. Okay, so let's, now that I have a wider angle lens, what that allows me to do is actually move the camera in a little bit closer. Okay, so let's, let's look at that for now. We'll keep the camera the way it is. Okay, so let's let's look at where we're at here. So we've looked at ambient light. Again, we'll come back to it. We've made a directional light. We've looked at the cameras, creating the camera, show the camera, which was f6. We've looked at the lens length, the view undos. We can start to talk about some of these other things now, the ground plane reflection, the background. So let's let's look into those now. Okay, let's see what our rendering, before we start making changes, I'd like to see what our rendering looks like. So I'll go ahead and render that out. And I wanna make sure that I'm rendering camera one. Okay. So let's look at some of these render properties. Okay, now I'm gonna look at the materials that are made. So we have a ground plane and I'd like to have that ground plane showing some reflections. Okay, so now the rest of my objects, they're using a default material. This is just the standard in Rhino 6. So to see what material is being used, you just highlight that material and it's gonna show you. Again, in Rhino 6, they just all use that default plaster. So now this ground plane, I'm gonna change that so it has some reflectivity to it. So I'm gonna click on that material and I'm going to go to this pull down and I'm gonna create a new material. And I'm gonna use a custom and I can name this, I can call this ground plane. Okay, and you see the color by default is white. It doesn't have any glossiness, any reflectivity, or any transparency. So I'm gonna give this some glossiness and a lot of reflectivity. And I'm gonna see what that looks like when I render it. Now, to see my last rendering, I can open my last rendering up because now it's closed. 
if I go to render from the main menu, I can choose open last rendering. And that shows the last rendering. And I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of it. And I'm going to render this viewport. Okay, so you see I'm getting this really high reflection here. Okay, we're going to deal with that. Before we do that, let's look at some of our render settings here. Okay, so for right now, I'm going to turn off Use Custom Environment for Reflections. And for the skylight, I'm also going to turn off Use Custom Environment for Skylighting. Okay, so I'm turning both of those off. And I'm going to go ahead and render that out. I'm going to copy this just to see the difference, or clone it, and render it. Okay, so a couple things that changed there. One was in the previous rendering where I had used custom environment for reflections on and used custom environment for skylighting, I was getting some artifacts, we'll call it, or uh, the light source, I guess is what I was seeing on that ground plane. So we've, we've taken care of that. So this is our, our latest rendering. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take down some of that reflectivity. So back in the layers, we're going to click on that material and take this reflectivity. I'll start at around 50% and see what that looks like. Okay, so it's it's a little it's a little more subtle at the moment. Okay, so let's let's keep looking at some of these settings. So I'm going to right click on the sphere. Okay, so you might be saying, wow, that's, it's pretty bright. That image is pretty bright. So how do we deal with that? So we have, we have this button that we can click on. We can also type in the command lights. Okay, so the, the window is a little different. When I type in the command lights, I have more options, environments, lights, sun, ground plane. When I just click on lights, it's showing me just the light tab. So for right now, I'm going to use the command lights. So you see the intensity of that light we made. It's right here. It's very bright. Okay, let's turn it down. Let's turn that down to 60. And let's render that out now. So that's, that's a little bit better. That's a little bit more of what we want to see. Okay. And let's actually look at that with the skylight checked on or off. And I can do that here. And I can also do it from this lights dialog box. You see it right here. I can click it off and it's updating there. So in, in either place, you can do that. So let's look at what that looks like. We'll make a comparison. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and leave that skylight on. And back in the lights dialog box, you see we don't have a lot of choices for that other than using custom environments. Okay. All right, so while we're talking a little bit about materials, uh, I want to move down to this wireframe, but while we're on the topic of materials, I'm going to go back to my, my layers. I have a, uh, a hatch here where I'm going to add some color into this rendering. So I'm going to click on the material, and I made a material previously, and I'm going to walk you through that once more. So I'm going to click on Plus, and I'm going to choose Custom. And we'll call this, call it purple shade this time. And I'm going to change the color of that so that it's 
a purple color. I can click here on magenta or I can click in the in the color wheel. Okay, the gloss, reflectivity, transparency, those are all set to zero, so I'm gonna go with that. Okay, so now you see that's been updated here. So let's get a base rendering for that. Okay, so now we have some other options. When I click, when I right click on that blue sphere or I can click on the render tab here. We have some options. One is you can render the curves. If you'd like to just render the curves right on top of this, you could do that. So whatever curves you have in your scene, those, those are going to show up there. Okay. I think the uh, the camera is showing up in my in my view. So you see the camera is displayed here. So I'm going to use our shortcut F6 to turn that camera off, and let's render that out again. Okay, so that was the camera we were seeing. So it's good that we saw it together. So when you see it on your own, you can figure out how to change that. Okay, so you can render curves. You can also render the surface edges in ISO curves. It's another way to do it. Okay, and in that case, you might want to control the properties of your ISO curves. Let's say that you didn't want to see the ISO curves, and I'll just do it with a couple of these, so I'll make those ISO curves disappear. What I, what I would do is I could select the ground plane and I could go to properties and I can turn the ISO curve off by clicking on show ISO curve and I'll do it with this I'll do it with this object as well I mean, just for a moment turn this back to shaded so I can see so that poly surface I'm gonna go ahead and click on show ISO curve and I'm gonna turn that off okay so now when I render it Okay, so I turn the ISO curve off on the ground plane and on the object. So that's a quick way to make a hybrid rendering, although you just, you, you know, in this case you don't have a lot of control. And I want to show you a way that you have a lot more control over these things. Okay, so let's uncheck cast shadows, or I'm sorry, not, cast, not uncheck cast shadows. Um, let's go down to, or let's go over to our render properties and I'm going to uncheck render surface edges and ISO curves. Okay, uh, I think the last thing I want to show before we make the, the final rendering is how to deal with the shadow intensity. Okay, and we didn't see that when we typed in the command lights. We don't see anything that deals with the shadow intensity here. Let's look at it. Let's look at this box and see if we see anything. I'm not, I'm not seeing anything that deals with that. Okay, so where you need to look for that? Where are we going to look for that? Um, I want to look under my properties. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and click on that light. Alright, so when I select that light, then under my properties tab, I have shadow intensity. Okay, I also have light intensity and I also have the color of the light as well. Okay, so let's look at that for a moment. So uh, we'll, we'll bring up our last rendering and we see the shadows. We see what we're, the shadows, this is a full 100%. So if I take that down to zero, we're not gonna have any shadows. Let's make sure I'm rendering the camera view. Okay, so we, we have some ambient shadows, which are shadows from one object to another, but we don't have the cast shadows that you're seeing here. So let's let's look at that again. Let's go to properties and 
So you see, you can change that shadow intensity to anything that you'd like. I'm going to keep that at 100 for now and render that back out. Okay, so you see those shadows. Okay. Before we render out at the high resolution, is there anything else that I want to look at? Let's take a look. Okay, so we've looked at shadow adjustments. Okay, some of the viewport display settings. So those are gonna be helpful, and we'll look at that when we switch over to make the technical drawing. So again, this is about making a hybrid, a hybrid drawing. Okay, so we'll come back to viewport display settings. Let's, let's jump into quality. Okay, so we'll talk about quality. So quality is a couple things. One thing is its resolution. Let's close that down. So I'm going to right click on that. Let's make this camera one view large. We'll maximize that. Okay, so let's look at resolution. Now, you have the ability to do custom, custom resolutions. You can pick from some of these presets, but typically you're going to do custom where you want to change the size. Now, do, do not pay attention to DPI. We don't need to look at that dots per inch. We just need to look at the pixels. So we're going to make this, let's make it 11 by 17, 200 pixels per inch. 200 pixels per inch. So it's just your, your size. So the width of this would be, it would be, if it was 11 by 17, it would be 17 wide. And I take that by... I times that by my pixels per inch that I'm looking for. So if it's 200, that's going to be 3,400 pixels per inch. It's 17 times 200. And then the height, which is 11 times 200, is going to be 2,200 pixels. So that's what we're going to render at. And then you have your various qualities that you can choose. Okay, And that's going to get rid of some of the noise that you saw in some of these. So let's go ahead and change that to final quality. And we'll go ahead and render that. OK, so that took a little longer to render than I expected. I know it looked fast in the video, but it actually took a little while. You know, 9 minutes, 36 seconds. I don't have the fastest laptop in the world. But uh, where you can save some time is, is on the quality. And if you have the time and you have the computing speed, fine. Go for final quality. But you know you can get some decent renderings even with draft and good quality. So it's all about balancing how much time you have versus the quality that you need. OK, so that one, I'm going to go ahead and save that because we're going to need that to make our, our hybrid drawing. So this is just our rendering. OK, now to make the hybrid drawing, I am going to change the viewport display. I'm going to change it to technical. And here I'm getting some hidden lines. And now you'll notice that I'm seeing the layer colors. And I'm going to want all these to be black. So I am going to make my, I'm going to start by making my print colors black. Let's see. That one's black. Okay, so those are all black. So that it almost has fixed it. I see some some colors back there on some of my contour lines. So just to be safe, I'm gonna select all these and I'm gonna make these black as well. Okay, so I have primarily black lines here. Okay, now I said I wanted to, to touch a little bit on the on the viewport settings. So here under display, a couple things you want to make sure that are, are set. One thing is that the background is using the application settings. I've seen on some computers where that is not the default. So we're using application settings there. But for all of your viewport settings, for instance, this is, this is technical, but I can access all of the display modes here. And for all of the display modes, you have endless, I'll call it endless settings. Okay, so if you want to turn some of these things on, 
you can, or if you want to turn some of these things off, you can also. So um, just, you know, something to, to note for all of your display modes, you have these options. So you'll want to look into those. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out to you guys. All right, so now for this technical drawing, I'm actually going to be printing this. And for my destination, I'm using image. Okay, not, not Adobe PDF or anything like that. I'm using image. And I need to set this to the resolution that my rendering was at, which was at 3,400 pixels wide by 2,200 pixels tall. My output color is print. Let's go for it. Let's go ahead and print that. This is going to be my technical. All right. And let's go ahead and open these up in Photoshop. So I'll start with the rendering. Okay, so there's my rendering. And I'm going to open up the technical drawing. And I'm going to I'm going to just go ahead and copy paste that right over my renderings. Okay, so I'm going to use some shortcuts here. I'm going to use control A, which is select all. Control C, which is copy, and I'm going to go over to my rendering, and Control V, which is paste. And I'm going to take the opacity down on this layer. Okay, so that's how I'm going to create this hybrid drawing. Finding the right opacity is going to take a little, little time, but you'll, you'll figure that out. So let's go ahead and zoom into this. So now you're seeing the hybrid. You're seeing the line work over the rendering. So that's what I call a hybrid drawing. Okay, I think we covered everything that we needed to. Yes, we did. So hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, go ahead and give it a like below. Please remember to subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and comment below and I'll answer those directly. All right, I will see you next time.